grieving the Holy Spirit. Adalah topik hari ini adalah berduka untuk uh, Roh Kudus. So I pray that you will be one with the Spirit. Uh, saya berharap berdoa bahwa kita semua menjadi satu dengan Roh Kudus. That you'll hear what the Holy Spirit is saying today. Uh, supaya kita bisa mendengar apa yang Roh Kudus ucapkan bagikan bagi kita. I um, I'm praying God, please don't let me cry because I want to, I, you know, sometimes when I cry I don't stop. <laughs> saya berdoa supaya uh, saya bisa tahan supaya enggak nangis hari ini. So God help me. Uh, Tuhan tolong saya. Help me. Grieving the Holy Spirit. Berduka untuk Roh Kudus. The Holy Spirit is a person of the Godhead. Uh, Roh Kudus uh, adalah bagian dari Tuhan. Um, in in John chapter 15 verse 26 it says this. Yohanes 15 ayat 26 mengatakan. When the Holy when the Counselor comes whom I will send to you from my father the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will testify about me oh, okay i continue <laughs> see many christians do not really have a good idea that the holy spirit is a person uh, banyak orang kristen uh, tidak memiliki gagasan pikiran bahwa roh kudus itu adalah suatu personal See, just because you know he was sent by Jesus, people think that he is lesser than God. Ada yang berpikir bahwa karena Roh Kudus dikirim oleh Tuhan, Roh Kudus itu tidak sama seperti Tuhan. That he is some kind of a force. Bahwa dia Roh Kudus itu seperti suatu kuasa, kekuatan. He is not that force that you know. What is that? Star Wars. What is that? It's not a force. He's not a force. Roh Kudus itu bukan kekuatan, bukan suatu uh, kuasa. All that is far from the truth. Uh, hal tersebut, gagasan tersebut tidak benar. In the, the Hebrew word in Genesis 1 for God is Elohim. Di buku Ibrani Tuhan adalah Elohim. And that word Elohim speaks of three persons um, in the Godhead. Dan Elohim itu berbicara tentang uh, bagian Roh Kudus dari uh, Tuhan yang uh, kepala. So you have God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Jadi ada Tuhan Allah, Tuhan uh, Anak dan uh, Roh Kudus. So all of these three person they represent the Godhead. Uh, tiga hal ini um, merepresentasikan mewakili Tuhan kepala. You, you see the word Trinity that we use is actually not a very good term. Godhead is better than Trinity. Istilah Trinitas yang kita kenal uh, sebenarnya uh, tidak cukup baik karena uh, Tuhan yang kepala itu adalah uh, representasi yang lebih baik. That's why when we use the word Elohim, it represents all three. Oleh karena itu ketika meng- kita uh, menggunakan kata Elohim itu mer- uh, mewakili ketiga pribadi Allah. So the way we say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that placement does not mean that there is a different degrees of importance. Jadi ketika kita berbicara tiga pribadi itu bukan berbicara tentang tiga uh, pribadi yang uh, memiliki kepentingan masing-masing. All three persons of the Godhead are important. Ketiga pribadi tersebut sama pentingnya. Each of them has a function. Setiap dari satunya itu memiliki fungsi masing-masing. And you know in creation all three were present. Dalam ciptaan uh, ketika diciptakan semuanya ada tiga tiga pribadi tersebut. The Holy Spirit is the very spirit of the living God. Roh Kudus itu adalah uh, roh dari Allah itu sendiri. Because the Holy Spirit is a person. Karena Roh Kudus adalah pribadi. He has intellect. Dia memiliki kecerdasan intelek. He acts. Dia bisa bertindak. He has feelings. Dia memiliki perasaan. Hence, certain actions of people cause him to grieve. Sehingga uh, tindakan perilaku orang bisa membuatnya berduka. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says this. Efesus 4 ayat 30. Said don't cause grief to God's spirit. 
for he has stamped you as his property until the day of final redemption. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit in whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So I want to go through some Hebrew words because the Hebrew words has depth to, to the meaning of uh, what is said. So let's go to the definition of seal. Seal, S-E-L, okay, it's up there. Um, Mari kita membahas definisi dari matrai. So in Hebrew word, the, the word for seal is hosam, hotam. Uh, dalam bahasa Ibrani, uh, kata dari... Uh, matra itu adalah hosam. So it refers to a signet ring, okay? Like a signet ring or a signature ring. Yang merujuk kepada suatu cincin untuk memberikan tanda. And then the Greek word for seal is uh, phragis. Uh, bahasa Yunani dari uh, tanda tersebut, matra tersebut adalah phragis. And it's a signet or a stamp impressed literally or figuratively as a seal. Uh, suatu yang bisa dibuat seperti cap untuk so, matrai. So maybe you think why am I bringing all this thing but I need you to pay attention because the problem with the body of Christ they don't study the word you know diligently intentionally because they 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 don't study the actual words of the Bible. Uh, saya mengangkat hal ini sangat penting uh, karena uh, supaya kita bisa mengamati, mempelajari sangat pen, uh, kata dari Alkitab tersebut, dari bahasa aslinya. If we want to move to more, um, you know, a level in understanding of God's word, we need to study the Hebrew and the Greek. Untuk memahami uh, firman lebih dalam lagi, kita perlu mempelajari bahasa Ibrani dan ya, uh, Yunani. And it's Nowadays, you can find it in, in um, eSword. It's so easy. You can download eSword and you'll find the meaning. Dan sekarang sangat mudah untuk mendapatkan uh, informasi tersebut dari uh, online. So here, I want you to see from the definition that the Holy Spirit is a stem, like a stem on us, okay? That we belong to God. Jadi dari definisi ini, seperti um, roh kudus adalah seperti cap bahwa kita milik Allah. And it is a seal of our covenant with him. Dan merupakan tanda dari persekutuan kita, perjanjian kita dengan Allah. So it means that the Holy Spirit is the sign on us that we accepted God's covenant through the blood of Jesus. Artinya bahwa kita menerima pengorbanan Tuhan uh, lewat Yesus Kristus. And that seal also means that God has accepted us. Hal tersebut juga merupakan tanda bahwa Tuhan telah menerima kita. So do you see the importance of the Holy Spirit? Jadi kita bisa lihat betapa pentingnya uh, Roh Kudus tersebut. He is the stem on our lives. Dia adalah merupakan ma- yang mematraikan hidup kita. That we have been accepted by God. Bahwa kita telah diterima oleh Tuhan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are marked out for salvation. Jadi kita sudah ditandai untuk keselamatan. But our salvation is not yet complete because we are still on earth. Tapi keselamatan kita belum uh, sempurna karena kita masih di sini di bumi. When I say that, please don't misunderstand me. The work of Jesus on the cross is finished. Uh, supaya kita tidak salah paham bahwa uh, tugas ke- pekerjaan Kristus di salib sudah selesai. But our full salvation comes when we are with the Lord in heaven. That's the fullness of it. Tapi keselamatan untuk kita uh, akan sempurna ketika kita bersama Tuhan di surga. So right now what the Holy Spirit is doing, He is making sure that we will have the fullness of that redemption in heaven. Jadi tugas dari roh kudus tersebut adalah supaya kita memperoleh kesempurnaan keselamatan itu di surga. So in Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19 to 20. Di Ezekiel 11 ayat 29. Um, what the Holy Spirit is doing right now in our lives is to circumcise our hearts. Uh, jadi apa yang Roh Kudus lakukan sekarang adalah untuk menjaga hati kita. Says here, I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. 
that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. They will be my people and I will be their God. The Holy Spirit circumcising our hearts is the sanctifying work of God. So here it means that what the Holy Spirit is doing is once he stamp on you, he's making sure that seal does not come off. Jadi yang Roh Kudus lakukan adalah ketika kita sudah dimateraikan, Roh Kudus itu menjaga supaya tanda tersebut tidak hilang. If you look at a stamp, a stamp, you know, sometimes after a while it comes off. Kalau kita melihat materai seal perangko, kadang-kadang bisa copot. So what the Holy Spirit is ensuring is that that seal remains until we have the fullness of our redemption with God in heaven. Hallelujah. Jadi Roh Kudus berfungsi untuk menjaga supaya tanda tersebut tetap utuh sampai kita di surga. So so here the Holy Spirit is like a guarantor for us. Jadi Roh Kudus seperti memberikan jaminan bagi kita. He's not only the seal, but he is trying to make sure he guarantees that we will have the fullness of the salvation, the redemption that Jesus has bought for us. Jadi tidak hanya berfungsi untuk menjaga, tapi untuk menjamin bahwa sampai kita memiliki kepenuhan keselamatan tersebut. So that's why circumcision of heart is so important. Jadi penting untuk menjaga hati kita. Let's look at the definition of grief. Uh, mari kita melihat definisi dari duka. The Greek word for grief is lopeo. Bahasa Yunani dari kata Yunani dari duka adalah lopeo. It means to be distressed, to be sad, to be made sorrowful, to afflict with sorrow and to offend. Um, ber- yang berarti menjadi sedih dan berduka dan untuk uh, uh, And the Hebrew word for grief is oshap. Oshap is a verb that means to hurt, to pain, to grieve, to shape and fashion. Dan bahasa Ibrani-nya adalah atsap yang berarti uh, sakit atau merasakan sakit atau berduka. So all this definition of grief is to make the Holy Spirit sorrowful, you know? Um To, to pain him. Jadi arti dari kata-kata tersebut adalah untuk menyakiti atau mendukakan uh, Roh Kudus. So why do we need to bring the Hebrew word when the New Testament is in Greek? Uh, jadi uh, kenapa kita harus uh, membahas bahasa uh, Ibrani ketika perjanjian baru di, Yahun, di bahasa Yunani? So it is because we need to know the background when that word was first mentioned. Jadi hal tersebut penting untuk mengetahui latar belakang kat, pertama kali kata tersebut disebut. You see the, uh, the 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 law of first mention is so important. Hukum dari di mana kata pertama tersebut itu penting. So la- now let's see where this word was first mentioned. Mari kita lihat uh, di mana kapan kata pertama duka tersebut dinyatakan. It's in Genesis chapter 6 verse 6. Di Kejadian 6 ayat 6. Um, I'm reading from the uh, W and no, yeah W E B U version because it's um, you know public domain, so it uses the word Yahweh for God. So Yahweh was sorry that He made man on the earth, and it grieved Him in His heart. So this this. There is a seriousness to this message that I need you. I need your spirit man to lay hold of what God is saying. You know? Saya, Not with your mind because sometimes your mind will try to filter out things you don't like, but I warn you by your by, by the spirit of the living God inside of you lay a hold of this message. Jadi saya mengundang kita untuk membangkitkan roh di dalam diri kita masing-masing untuk menjangkau firman ini. Now, why is it serious? Because Jesus mentioned that that day that is in Noah's time is coming again. Hal ini penting karena Tuhan telah menyatakan bahwa hal hari yang penting itu akan datang lagi. Let me read from Genesis 6 verse 5 to 9 first and then I will give what Jesus said. Genesis 6 verse 5 to 9, I read already 5 so I'm going to go 
Yahweh was sorry that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him his heart. But look back in verse 5, he says, Yahweh saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of man's heart was continually evil. That's how bad it was. Tuhan menyesal seperti disebutkan di kejadian 6 ayat 5. So can you imagine that day is coming again as Jesus said. Nah, bisa dibayangkan ketika Tuhan mengatakan bahwa hal tersebut akan datang lagi. What did what what does uh, God say in uh, verse 7? He says Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the surface of the ground, man along with animals creeping things and birds of the sky for I am sorry that I've made them but Noah found favor in Yahweh's eyes Seperti di kejadian 6 ayat 7 bahwa Tuhan akan menghapuskan ciptaannya tetapi Nuh mendapat kasih karunia di mata Tuhan Let's look at what Jesus said in Matthew 24:37 to 44 Matthew 24:37 to 44 Matius 24. So verse uh, 37, as the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ship. And they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be? Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know in, our, in what hour your Lord comes. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what watch of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and he, we would have not allowed his house to be broken in. Therefore, also be ready for in an hour that you don't expect the Son of Man will come. Demikian Matius 24 ayat 37 sampai 44. So you see the seriousness, you know in the ark, once the ark, the door of the ark was closed, it was closed. Nobody could get in anymore. Jadi seperti cerita Baterah Nuh ketika pintu kapalnya sudah tertutup, tidak ada lagi yang bisa masuk. So when Jesus come, that hour he comes, it's too late. Jadi ketika Tuhan Yesus telah datang, itu berarti kita sudah terlambat. A lot of people say, oh yeah, when we hear the sound of the trumpet, we will repent. No, it says in the twinkling of the eye, you don't have time to repent. Seperti disebutkan bahwa ketika kita mendengar suara trompet, kita baru bisa bertobat. Tapi seperti dibilang bahwa dalam sekejap mata saja, semua sudah berubah dan semua bisa terlambat. So the... We have to understand the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives that causes him to grieve. Jadi kita harus mengerti uh, uh, apa yang menyebabkan Roh Kudus berduka. So I want to speak on uh, do the definition of circumcision. Jadi saya uh, mencari definisi dari circumcision. Uh, the Hebrew word for circumcision is moal. Kata dari bahasa Ibrani adalah moal. So it's a verb that to describe, to cut short, to cut off, to circumcise. Yang berarti memotong, memendekkan. So the first time we heard about circumcision is when Abraham was uh, was commanded to circumcise himself, and you know, and, and the whole male in their in his household, they were all circumcised. Jadi kata pertama kali kita mendengar sirkumsisi ini adalah ketika Abraham disuruh menyunat. Uh, Anak -anak yang laki -laki. So that circumcision, that obedience to the circumcision that God told him was was a, a, 
an agreement by Abraham that he said, "Yes, I will enter into this covenant with you." Jadi ketika Abraham mentaati, menaati Tuhan perintah Tuhan untuk uh, menyunatkan uh, berarti uh, menandakan bahwa dia menerima perintah Tuhan. I will connect all those, you know, later. Okay. You guys lost. I hope you're not lost. <laughs> Apakah saya menghubungkan? Saya akan mencoba menghubungkan lagi. Uh, I know. Sorry. If it's if you are lost, then you need to go back and study a lot of these scriptures. Okay. Yeah. These are actually basic things that we should know, right? Kita bisa melihat lagi Firman. Uh, the Greek word for circumcision is perot at perome. Uh, kata bahasa Yunani dari circumcision adalah peritome. Um, it's a noun meaning to cut around or circumcise, to cut the foreskin. Uh, yang berarti uh, kata benda yang uh, berarti untuk memotong dari sekitar kulit. So the significance of circumcision is cut, the word cut. Jadi inti dari uh, circumcision kata tersebut adalah untuk memotong. In the account of Genesis 15:9 to 18, I would like you to go back and read that. Genesis 15:9 to 18. Jadian 15 ayat 9 sampai 18. We read that God cutting a covenant with Himself for Abraham. Bahwa Tuhan memotong perjanji- membuat perjanjian antara uh, dirinya dan Abraham. And you might might be thinking, what's that got to do with us? Apa hubungannya dengan kita? Mungkin kita. You know, that's Abraham's time. What has that got to do with us today? Itu waktunya zaman Abraham. Apa hubungannya dengan kita hari ini? Everything that you sang today. Segala hal yang kita katakan hari ini. When did God cut Himself for us? Sejak kapan Tuhan memotong dirinya bagi kita? When God came down in the flesh as Jesus and went all the way to the cross. Saat Tuhan ketika Tuhan menjadikan dirinya manusia dan disalibkan. When he was knelt on the cross he was cut. Ketika dia disalibkan dipaku ke salib. When they whip him on his body he was cut. Ketika mereka memecut Tuhan dan itulah saat dia dipotong. When there was thorn on his head he was cut. Di, di saat mereka memakaikan mahkota duri di situ lah. When he potong. was pierced on the side, he was cut. Ketika Tuhan Yesus ditombak, di situ lah dia dipotong bagi kita. That's for us today. Itulah bagi yang dilakukan bagi kita hari ini. All that images of Jesus on the cross or on the way to the cross. Is the image of cut God cutting a covenant. Semua gambaran hal yang terjadi ketika Tuhan disalibkan itu adalah gambaran dari perjanjian Tuhan bagi kita. So when when Abraham agreed to be circumcised, saat Abraham setuju untuk disunat, it was accepting this covenant. Merupakan tanda menerima dari perjanjian dia dan Tuhan. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, saat kita menerima Tuhan sebagai juru selamat, we are supposed to accept the the circumcision of our hearts. Kita harus menerima pemotongan penyunatan hati kita. Only when we allow the Holy Spirit to cut, hanya saat circumcise our heart, hanya saat kita mengizinkan hati kita untuk dipotong, we have never actually agreed. To the covenant of God through Jesus Christ. Maka kita belum menerima perjanjian sampai hati kita dipotong. How many Christians just refuse to let the Holy Spirit to do the work in the heart? Ada berapa orang Kristen yang uh, mungkin belum mau menerima pekerjaan Roh Kudus di hati kita? We live a lie when we think when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are good. Kita uh, tidak benar-benar menerima Tuhan sebagai juru selamat ketika keadaan baik. We're not yet. We have that seal of the Holy Spirit, but we're not there yet. Kita belum sampai di sana. Kita punya tanda tersebut, materai tersebut, tapi kita belum sampai. I wish you can see the parallels between Abraham and us. Saya harap kita bisa melihat uh, persamaan antara Abraham dan kita. Let, let's, I know the slide goes slide six. Are we there? Thank you. 
uh, yeah, it's kind of very tiny, but um, uh, what I want you to, you know, I'm going to explain a little bit. So the, with Abraham, uh, the, the one column is about Abraham, the other one is about believers. So the, there is a promise to Abraham about his seed. Jadi ada, ada perjanjian antara Allah dengan Abraham dengan benihnya. So what is the promise of blessing for us believers? It is the good news of Jesus Christ. Jadi persamaannya dengan orang percaya adalah perjanjian kita dengan Yesus Kristus. And then you see uh, Abraham had faith in what God told him about the promise. Dan Abraham punya iman, dia beriman terhadap janji Allah. So we are believers, we believe the good news that Jesus is the good news. Jadi sama dengan orang percaya, kita percaya akan kabar baik dari Tuhan. So that's belief, okay? Itulah kepercayaan. Now we come to uh, the covenant itself. The so sekarang kita membahas tentang perjanjian itu sendiri. So the covenant, Abraham had to say yes to that covenant. Jadi Abraham um, um, menyetujui, menerima perjanjian tersebut. And believers, we need to say yes to. Dan sebagai orang percaya kita juga perlu menerima dan berkata ya. But the evidence of the yes from Abraham is that he said yes to God to circumcise. Tapi sebagai tindakan bukti dari kepercayaan Abraham, dia setuju untuk disunat. And for us, when we say yes to covenant, we say yes, circumcise our hearts. Dan kita sebagai orang percaya, ketika kita menerima, berarti ya menerima untuk hati kita disunat dan dipotong. Do you see the work of the Holy Spirit? Kita bisa lihat pekerjaan dari Roh Kudus. What has circumcision got to do with grieving of the Holy Spirit? Apa sih hubungannya dari penyunatan sirkumsisi tersebut dengan mendukakan Roh Kudus? It has to do with the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Itu berhubungan dengan pekerjaan Roh Kudus di hati kita. God sent Jesus sent us his Holy Spirit to do that work in our hearts. Tuhan mengirimkan Roh Kudus untuk bekerja di hati kita. Because the righteousness of Jesus is not just a garment. Karena kebenaran dari Roh Kudus bukan hanya dari uh, tubuh kita. The righteousness of the the righteousness that Jesus talk about is the righteousness of Jesus living inside of us. Kebenaran Roh Kudus dan Tuhan itu adalah ketika Tuhan Yesus hidup dalam hati kita. We all know. All of us know. Kita semua tahu. That we have sin in our lives. Bahwa kita semua berdosa. And so, what is the Holy Spirit trying to do? Jadi apa yang Roh Kudus coba lakukan? He wants to bring out the righteousness of Christ living inside of us out. Tuhan Yesus mencoba Roh Kudus bekerja untuk mencoba mengeluarkan kebenaran dari Tuhan Yesus yang hidup dalam hati kita. And the Holy Spirit has been trying so hard in our lives the moment we accept the Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Dan Roh Kudus akan bekerja keras untuk melakukan hal tersebut ketika kita menerima Tuhan Yesus sebagai juru selamat. Although I have been been a believer since 1977, walau saya sudah menjadi orang percaya sejak tahun 77, But I did not understand the circumcision of the heart is that important. It, it was only about 20, 20 years ago that I realized the seriousness of circumcision of heart. Tapi saya baru mengerti penyunatan pemotongan hati 20 tahun yang lalu. Betapa pentingnya hal tersebut. Every time the Holy Spirit said, ah ah. Saat Roh Kudus berkata tidak. Sometimes I don't follow. Kadang saya tidak mematuhinya. You know, I was thinking about what Robin said earlier. Saya mendengar apa yang dibagikan Pastor Robin sebelumnya. You know, the Holy Spirit is like this. Roh Kudus seperti demikian. Go slow. Pelan-pelan. Don't. Stop. But many times we eh. Kadang-kadang kita tidak mematuhinya. Because we don't understand the work of the Holy Spirit. Karena kita belum mengerti uh, Roh Kudus, arti dan kuasa Roh Kudus. So, how can we be ready? Jadi bagaimana supaya kita bisa siap? If we keep ignoring the Holy Spirit, how can we be ready? Kalau kita tidak menghiraukan Roh Kudus, bagaimana kita bisa siap? 
Romans chapter 8 verse 22 to 27. Roma 8 ayat 22 sampai 27. You know, many intercessors quote verse 26 in relation to the Holy Spirit praying through us. Banyak uh, pendoa uh, mengutip uh, ayat 26 dalam hubungan Roh Kudus dengan kita. Praying through the Holy Spirit is just one one aspect of God's uh, of the Holy Spirit's uh, work inside of us. Berdoa kepada Roh Kudus hanya satu aspek dari pekerjaan Roh Kudus dalam diri kita. He has much more. Ada banyak hal lain yang bisa Roh Kudus lakukan. Verse 22. Ayat 22. For, for we know that the whole creation groans and travels in pain together until now. And verse 23 says, not so only but ourselves also we have the who have the first fruit of the spirit even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for adoption the redemption of our body. Why we are waiting? Because it's not not full yet. For we, verse 24, for we are saved, we were saved in hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for, for that which he sees? But if we hope for that which we don't see, we wait for it in patience. Now in the same way, verse 26, the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses for we don't know how to pray as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which can't be uttered verse 27 he's he who searches the hearts knows what is on the on the spirit's mind because he makes intercession for the saints according to god so The context for this passage is the hope of the redemption in suffering. Jadi konteks dari Roma 8 ayat 20 sampai 27 itu adalah harapan dalam keselamatan. Verse 26 tells us that the Holy Spirit wants to help us in our weakness. Uh, ayat 26 mengatakan bahwa Roh Kudus membantu kita dalam kelemahan kita. Verse 27 says that the Holy Spirit is able to do it. Dan uh, ayat 27 mengatakan bahwa uh, Roh Kudus mampu melakukan hal tersebut. Why, why is the Holy Spirit able to do that? Because He's God. Kenapa Roh Kudus bisa mampu melakukan hal tersebut? Karena Dia ada Tuhan. He knows the mind and the will of God. Dia mengetahui pikiran dan kehendak Tuhan. Because He's God. Karena Dia adalah bagian dari Tuhan sendiri. He's the dia Spirit adalah... of the Living God. Dia adalah Roh dari Allah yang hidup. So likewise, God who searches our heart. You know, know exactly what the spirit, what his own spirit is thinking. Jadi seperti Allah menyelidiki hati kita, Roh Kudus juga demikian bisa mengetahui menyelidiki hati kita. So there is unity. Sehingga ada kesatuan. Unity in the three persons of the Godhead. Kesatuan dari tiga pribadi Tuhan. So here the Holy Spirit pleading for God's people. Jadi demikian Roh Kudus berdoa membantu menolong umat Tuhan to be in accord with his will supaya menjadi sejalan dengan kehendaknya in God's will dalam kehendak Tuhan I want us to say this the holy spirit was sent to help me saya ingin kita semua mengatakan ini roh kudus dikirim untuk menolong saya let's say it Ayo kita katakan, Roh Kudus ditolong untuk menolong saya. I want you to say it and mean it. The Holy Spirit was sent by God to help me. Supaya kita sungguh-sungguh mengatakannya, Roh Kudus ditolong untuk menyelamat menolong saya. The Holy Spirit is my guarantor. Roh Kudus adalah penjamin saya. The Holy Spirit is the seal upon my life. Roh Kudus adalah materai dari hidup saya. Amen. Amin. May God, God feed your spirit, man, God. <laughs> okay, now, the next point is the work of the Holy Spirit. What what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. I, I I'm only bringing a few. There's so much more, but you know because ada, of uh, time constraints. Sorry. Ada banyak hal yang ingin Roh Kudus lakukan, uh, tapi saya hanya membahas beberapa di sini karena ada waktu. We're going to go back to um, you know John chapter one. Uh, sorry, John chapter 14, verse 26, the first verse that we read. 
Jadi kembali ke ayat pertama yang kita baca Yohanes 14 ayat 26. It says that the Holy Spirit, you know, the the, the but the counselor, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you all that I have said to you. Jadi Roh Kudus akan bekerja untuk mengingatkan kita apa yang kita pelajari di Tuhan. So so what is the Holy Spirit trying to do? He's trying to teach you all things. Jadi Roh Kudus akan berusaha untuk mengajarkan kita segala sesuatu. He's trying to to remind you of what Jesus have said. Untuk mengingatkan kita apa yang telah diucapkan uh, Tuhan. So if we don't allow him to do this, you know, it's going to grieve his heart. Kalau kita tidak mengizinkan Roh Kudus bekerja, itu akan mendukakan Roh Kudus. Now just think if you're a parent and you're trying to lead and guide your child. Sama seperti uh, layaknya jika Anda seorang tua uh, mencoba mengajarkan anak. Trying to teach them. Mencoba mengajarkan anak saudara. And they refuse to. Dan mereka menolak. In you know uh, Act, instead they go against you. Mereka malah melakukan hal sebaliknya. How would you as a parent feel? Bagaimana perasaan Anda sebagai orang tuanya? You'll be grief. Anda mungkin berduka. Sometimes when you really so exasperated, you scream. Kadang-kadang saat kita frustasi kita bisa teriak. But we thank God the Holy Spirit don't do that to us. Tapi kita bersyukur bahwa Roh Kudus tidak demikian. Why? Because he's a gentle spirit. Karena Roh Kudus adalah Roh yang lembut. That's why many times we just ignore him because he's so gentle. Makanya kadang-kadang mudah untuk mengacukannya karena dia sangat lembut. John chapter 16 verse 7. Yohanes 16 ayat 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I if I don't go away, this is Jesus talking. The counselor won't come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Seperti, so, mm. ya, Roh Kudus sebagai penghibur. So he, you know, the counselor in counseling means you know whatever problems you have, he's there. He's there to help you. Ya, sebagai uh, penghibur berarti kita bisa Uh, berkonsultasi dengan Tuhan. So, yeah, thank you. So when we don't allow the Holy Spirit to counsel us and we do it our way or we go to, you know, here and there media looking for an answer and we still can't find it and we still don't want the Holy Spirit, it grieves him. Jadi ketika kita tidak membiarkan Roh Kudus membimbing kita, uh, kadang itu mendukakan Roh Kudus. He's saying, I'm here. I'm here. Karena Roh Kudus berkata saya, aku di sini, aku di sini. I'm here to help you. Aku di sini untuk membimbing, membantu kamu. Let me help you. Biarkan saya membantu kamu. John chapter 16 verse 8. Yohanes 16 ayat 8. Says when he has come, he will convict the world of about sin about righteousness and judgment bahwa dia akan menginsafkan dunia akan dosa kebenaran dan penghakiman so the holy spirit wants to bring conviction of sin jadi roh kudus ingin menginsafkan dosa because if he can give you show you where you have sin then he can take you on the right path Jadi kalau Roh Kudus bisa memberi menunjukkan kepada kita hal yang berdosa, dia juga bisa memberikan kita jalan yang benar. So that the righteousness of you know of Jesus can come through. Sehingga kebenaran Tuhan, kebenaran Yesus dalam hati kita bisa keluar. You know, at one time when people didn't understand me, uh, di waktu sebelumnya ketika Tuhan uh, orang tidak mengenal saya. When I point out Sins in their life, they get so upset with me. They said, "You are being critical. You are just mean." Ketika orang tidak mengerti saya bahwa saya mencoba menunjukkan dosa, mereka pikir saya jahat. They didn't understand my heart. Mereka tidak mengerti hati saya. I know what it's like to live in sin. Saya tahu bagaimana rasanya hidup dalam dosa. I know what sin can do to you. Saya tahu apa yang dosa bisa lakukan pada hidup kita. The torment it does to you. Siksaan yang dalam hidup kita. They misunderstand me. Mereka salah mengerti maksud saya. And I felt the grief. Dan saya merasakan merasakan duka tersebut. And 
is what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He's not going after you. He's there to help you to walk in righteousness. Dan itulah yang Roh Kudus coba lakukan, bukan untuk mengejar Anda tapi membawa Anda hidup dalam kebenaran. He wants to teach us the righteousness of God so that we don't have to go through the wrath, the judgment. Ia mencoba menyatakan jalan Tuhan supaya kita tidak melalui dosa dan penghakiman. You know, our lives, our lives should should, you know, remind the evil forces the del judgment our lives. Hidup kita harusnya bisa mengingatkan akan uh, penghakiman dari dosa. It's not the other way. Bukan sebaliknya. It's not like we are so scared and judgment. Bukan uh, seperti kita takut akan penghakiman. One of your song, I'm just amazed at the spirit of God, the, the songs you all chose for this day. In, in the song, one of them said, no condemnation. Uh, saya sangat uh, menghargai lagu yang dipilih hari ini. Salah satunya adalah ketika uh, ada kata, tidak ada penghakiman. You see, we are not supposed to go through judgment and condemnation because of what Christ has done for us. Kita tidak perlu melalui penghakiman tersebut karena Tuhan telah menyelamatkan kita. But our lives should show, remind the the enemy, the devil, what they the judgment that they are going to face, what judgment is coming to them, not the other way, not us. Tapi hidup kita harusnya menjadi kesaksian bagaimana penghakiman itu akan Di, diarahkan kepada musuh-musuh kita. Hello? Amen? When we don't allow the Holy Spirit to teach us righteousness, kalau kita tidak mengizinkan roh kudus untuk mengajarkan kita kebenaran, and we disregard the conviction of sin, dan kita mengacuhkan uh, dosa, and we refuse to repent, dan kita menolak untuk bertobat, we grieve him we grieve the holy spirit maka kita akan mendukakan roh kudus second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 to 17 timot 2 timotius 3 16 dan 17 every scripture is god breathed and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that each person who belongs to god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work bahwa roh kudus akan bekerja untuk uh, mengajarkan kepada kita memberikan kita arahan supaya kita menjadi utuh dan diperlengkapi untuk uh, melakukan pekerjaan yang baik so those are the work that the Holy Spirit is trying to do because the, the word is inspired of the Holy Spirit. Inilah hal-hal yang Roh Kudus coba lakukan bagi kita. And if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, reprove us, correct us, instruct us in the way that we should walk in covenant with God, we grieve him. Why? Because he cannot do what he wants to do. Maka dengan demikian, kalau kita tidak mengizinkan hal Roh Kudus bekerja untuk memperlengkapi kita, saat itulah kita mendukakan Roh Kudus. Romans chapter uh, 13, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 8, verse 13 to 17. Roma 8 ayat 13 sampai 17. It says, if you live after the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are children of God. For you did not see this, you didn't receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our own our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if we indeed suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified with Him. Roh Kudus mengajarkan kita untuk meninggalkan manusia yang lama dan hidup sebagai anak Tuhan dan warisan Tuhan. Alright, so verse 13. Um, it says that the Holy Spirit wants us to put to death the carnal and fleshly deeds of our body. Jadi Roh Kudus ayat 13 uh, berusaha untuk meninggalkan manusia lama kita. 
And, uh, and it also, you know, another way to say it is the Holy Spirit wants us to put away our old man. Ya, dengan kata lain, meninggalkan manusia lama kita yang berdosa. Uh, that does not mean your father, okay? <laughs> Bukan berarti ayah kita. I'm just trying, I'm, I mean, the spirit. this message is so serious, so I thought I'll, I'll just do something like that, so you cheer up a little bit. Uh, So why is he doing that? So that we might live the abundant life that God has intend for us that is already secured in Jesus. Dan maksud dari Roh Kudus adalah supaya kita bisa hidup dalam kelimpahan Tuhan yang sudah disediakan oleh Yesus Kristus. When we don't allow the Holy Spirit to put away this old man, we grieve him. Supaya saat kita tidak mengizinkan Roh Kudus bekerja untuk meninggalkan manusia lama, kita mendukakan Roh Kudus. Because he cannot, he cannot give you, you know, bring you to that place of living an abundant life that Jesus said he would do. Karena hal tersebut tidak akan membiarkan Roh Kudus untuk membawa kita ke perjanjian Allah. John chapter 10 verse 10, we all know know this uh, very well, but let me bring this in for this um, you know, message. It says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But Jesus said, I come to give you life and life abundant. Yohanes 10 ayat 10, pencuri datang untuk mencuri, membunuh, dan binasakan. Aku datang supaya mempunyai hidup, mereka mempunyai hidup. So what is the Holy Spirit trying to do? He's trying to make sure what the devil has stolen, has killed or destroyed. He wants to bring back, restore that which is abundant life to you. Jadi Roh Kudus akan bekerja untuk supaya kita mempunyai hidup dalam kelimpahan. Can you imagine why his grief? He wants you to enjoy that abundant life, not just physical material thing that is many of us are thinking material, but there is much more. Jadi Roh Kudus bekerja untuk memberikan kita kelimpahan, bukan dari segi material, tapi lebih daripada itu. All material goods will flee away. Semua barang materi akan akan musnah. I think this pandemic has brought reality to us. Pandemi uh, yang kita lalui sudah membawa memberikan gambaran akan hal itu. I heard a, a, a rabbi taught this. Ada seorang rabbi yang bercerita. He said. Dia, dia mengatakan. Everything that is in the world will one day be judged by God because it's of the world. Segala hal yang berasal dari dunia suatu hari akan dihakimi oleh Tuhan karena mereka berasal dari dunia. I pondered on that for a while. Saya ber, uh, memikirkan hal tersebut. And I said, my goodness, he is so right. Dan saya bilang dia sangat benar. Everything in my life that was connected to the world, he judged. Segala hal yang uh, yang saya miliki dan berhubungan dengan dunia akan dihakimi. Why? Kenapa? Because God is concerned for my soul. Karena Tuhan sangat me- memikirkan akan jiwa kita. The only way that he will bring me to this realization of life in him is that the things of the world that I hold on to has to die. Satu-satunya jalan supaya kita bisa mengerti kehidupan yang dimiliki, kita bisa miliki dalam Tuhan adalah dengan menghilangkan barang-barang duniawi. Circumcision of the heart. Penyunatan pemotongan hati. Verse 14. Ayat 14. The Holy Spirit leads us as God's children. Roh Kudus memimpin kita sebagai anak Tuhan. Are we God's children? Apakah kita anak-anak Tuhan? Then let the Holy Spirit lead us. Maka biarkan Roh Kudus memimpin kita. Verse 16. Ayat 16. The Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Roh Kudus bersaksi dengan jiwa kita bahwa dengan semangat dengan roh kita bahwa kita adalah uh, keturunan Allah. Even though we have been adopted into God's family. Walau kita mungkin diadopsi ke dalam keluarga Tuhan. God diangkat, sees us his children. There's no difference. Tuhan melihat kita ketika kita sudah diangkat sebagai anak-anaknya. Verse 17. 
ayat 17. The Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Roh Kudus bersaksi bahwa kita adalah bagian dari keturunan Tuhan. Think about that. Ahli waris dari Tuhan. Pikirkan hal tersebut. Heirs of God? Ahli waris dari Tuhan. What does God have? Apa yang Tuhan miliki? If you are an heir to a very rich father, what do you have? Kalau kita ahli waris dari ayah yang sangat kaya, apa yang kita miliki? Now here it says we are heirs of the father, we are heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus. Dan di sini dikatakan bahwa kita adalah keturunan ahli waris dari Tuhan. Let's look at the next verse before you get so excited. Kita lihat dulu ayat berikutnya sebelum kita terlalu semangat. If we will suffer with him. Kalau kita menderita dengan dia. What does that mean? Artinya apa? Circumcision of the heart. Pemotongan sirkumsisi dari hati kita. Dying to the flesh and carnal desires. Mati dalam daging dan keinginan duniawi. And then we will be glorified with him. Baru demikian kita bisa dimuliakan bersama Tuhan. We like the glory of resurrection. Kita ingin right? kemuliaan dari kebangkitan. But we need circumcision of heart to live to rise up in the glory. Tapi kita perlu pemotongan dari hati. We dari cry kebangkitan. and pray for the glory of God to come. Kita mengharapkan kemuliaan Tuhan untuk datang. God is very willing to come. Uh, Tuhan juga ingin datang kembali. But are we willing to die? Tapi apakah kita bersedia untuk mati? That in him we will be glorified. Supaya that, dalam dia kita bisa melihat That we will see his glory. Dan kita bisa melihat kemuliaannya. Many churches are not seeing the glory. Banyak gereja tidak melihat kemuliaan Tuhan. Why? Mengapa? Circumcision of the heart. Tidak terjadi pemotongan hati. It is not about how how great your music is. It's not Yeah, there was things are important. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, because sometimes I talk like that. I said, oh, you, you know, they get upset with me because they say you, you just tearing down every technology. I said, no, you missed my point. Bukan hanya uh, main musik yang hebat. It's the circumcision of the heart that's going to bring the glory of God in the place. Tapi motongan dari kita, hati kita yang akan bawa kemuliaan Tuhan. It's all up to us. It's not up to God. God will come. Semuanya tergantung pada kita karena Tuhan akan datang. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 25. Galatia 5. Ayat 22 sampai 25. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and lust. If we live by the Spirit, sorry, let's also walk by the Spirit. Kalau kita ingin hidup dalam uh, roh, maka kita harus berjalan dengan roh. So the other thing that the Holy Spirit wants to do is to cultivate His fruit in our life. Remember, it's a fruit. It's not fruits. Jadi Roh Kudus ingin kita untuk menunjukkan buah dalam hidup kita. So it's not like you have love, you know, you can forget about patience. Uh, or if you have faithfulness, you can forget about self-control. Nothing ini, like that. Dan ini berhubungan dengan uh, berbaca macam buah. Jadi ke, kita berkaitan ber, dengan kasih tidak berhubungan dengan yang lain. Bukan seperti itu. All of those, the nature that is, you know, of the spirit should be cultivated in our lives. Semua karakter ciri-ciri dari uh, Roh Kudus itu harus dipelihara dalam hidup kita. If you wonder why there is a certain person, a certain character that always come into your life, it may be God trying to cultivate that particular fruit in your life. Ketika ada anda berasa bahwa ada satu karakter yang uh, selalu muncul dalam diri anda, mungkin Tuhan sedang bekerja untuk mengolah. But what do we do? God remove that person. He's making us miserable. Get him out of here. Lalu kalau misalnya ada orang seperti itu dalam hidup anda, mungkin kadang-kadang kita berdoa bahwa Tuhan singkirkan orang itu dari hidup saya. And 
And God cannot do that. Uh, Tuhan, Tuhan tidak melakukan hal itu. And I know that very real in my life. Hal tersebut terjadi dalam hidup saya. You know there are a lot of Christians they go from church to church because of things like that. Ada orang Kristen yang pindah dari lompat gereja karena hal tersebut. And they will never grow. Dan mereka tidak akan pernah bertumbuh. If you have not learned the lesson in the church. Kalau anda, you go to another church. Anda tidak belajar uh, pelajaran dari Tuhan dalam satu gereja lalu pindah ke gereja lain. You still have that problem. Itu akan menjadi masalah. So you become the addition to the problem to the other church. Maka anda akan menjadi tambahan masalah di gereja lain. Don't get me wrong, because God does move people, you know, you know, to different churches for His purpose, not our purpose, His purpose. Semoga supaya nggak salah paham bahwa Tuhan memang bisa bekerja memindahkan orang ke gereja lain, tapi itu untuk tujuannya Dia, tujuan Tuhan. So if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to work that in our lives, the fruit of His Spirit in our lives, then we grieve Him too. Dan kembali roh kudus, kita akan mendukakan roh kudus kalau tidak kita tidak mengizinkan Dia bekerja untuk menimbulkan buah-buah roh dalam hidup kita. We are representative of God. Kita merupakan perwakilan dari Tuhan. That's why the fruit of the Spirit being cultivated in our lives will help us be that re representative of God to be worthy vessels. Nah, dengan demikian, betapa penting bagi kita untuk mengolah, menubuhkan buah-buah roh dalam hidup kita supaya memberikan perwakilan yang baik bagi Tuhan. Well, there are other work. I know I can't uh, teach everything, so I'm going to conclude soon. Nah, saya akan menutup. So there are other works that you know um, the Holy Spirit is committed to do in our lives. Ada banyak sekali yang uh, Roh Kudus ingin kerjakan dalam hidup kita. How do we grieve Him so much? Uh, bagaimana kita mendukakan Roh Kudus? So it's like when He tells us something, we either ask Him to shut up and leave us alone. Ketika Dia ber ber bermaksud melakukan sesuatu dan kita mengatakan tidak. You may not use those words. Kita nggak bisa uh, melakukan pengucapan. But your attitude. Ada kali kita tidak bisa berkata, tapi sikap kita. Sometimes it, it amounts to us correcting the word of God and correcting the prompting of the Spirit. Kadang-kadang kita mencoba membenarkan uh, perkataan Roh Kudus atau pekerjaan Roh Kudus pada diri kita. Let's give you an example. I don't think the the Bible say it that way. I don't think it means that way. Um, kayaknya Firman Tuhan tuh maksudnya nggak begitu. Who Contohnya, are we? Siapakah kita? To correct the Bible, untuk membenarkan, to correct the prompting of the Holy Spirit, ayat dari Alkitab. If you don't understand, it's not God's problem. Kalau kita tidak mengerti, bukan masalah Tuhan. Unfortunately, there are a lot, a lot of pastors, leaders, and Christians doing that today. Sayangnya ada banyak orang Kristen dan pastor melakukan hal tersebut. They change anything they don't like. Mereka mengubah hal-hal yang mereka tidak suka. And they change things they don't understand. Dan mereka merubah hal-hal yang mereka tidak mengerti. Instead of the truth of God's word correcting us, bukannya firman Tuhan membenarkan kita, we end up correcting God. Kita mencoba mengkoreksi Tuhan. We end up correcting the truth. Kita akhirnya berusaha mengkoreksi kebenaran. We end up correcting the Holy Spirit. Kita bahkan mencoba mengkoreksi Roh Kudus. Heaven forbid this. Semoga hal tersebut tidak terjadi. Heaven forgive us. Jangan sampai terjadi. How many times we suppress the truth? Berapa kali kita sering men mencoba menekan kebenaran? Revelation, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 1 verse 18 says this. Roma 1 ayat 18. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Mengenai murka Tuhan yang akan diberikan kepada mereka yang mencoba menekan kebenaran. Every time we suppress the truth, we are walking in unrighteousness. Saat kita mencoba, setiap saat kita mencoba menekan kebenaran, kita berjalan dalam ketidakbenaran. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. Roh Kudus ada untuk menolong kita. Let Him do that work. Biarkan Roh Kudus bekerja. So that He can 
he can make sure that we are sealed and he's our guarantor for the fullness of the redemption that we are going to have when Jesus comes again. Agar kita tetap terjaga supaya dapat sampai kesempurnaan dari keselamatan bersama Tuhan. So I want you to bow your heads right mari, now. Mari kita tundukkan kepala. If the if you have been feeling a grief of the you know of the Holy Spirit moving in your heart through this message. Kalau kita merasakan ada kita, uh, Roh Kudus yang berduka melalui uh, pesan hari ini. It is a clear sign that he's telling you that you are grieving him. Uh, kita sangat jelas bisa mengetahui tanda bahwa kita telah mendukakan Roh Kudus. This is not emotional. This is real. Hal ini bukan emosional tapi nyata. I say again, if the Holy Spirit has been moving in your heart with grief, then repent right now. Saya katakan lagi kalau kita merasa bahwa Roh Kudus bergerak dalam hati kita dalam dalam kedukaan, marilah kita bertobat. 